guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Angela, the aspiring boss. So today's video is gonna be all about how to have the right payday routine. Now I know you probably hear that in like, payday routine. why do you need a payday routine? Like you get paid, it's simple. But I found that if you have a system in place, you're more likely to stick to your budget and achieve those financial goals um, that you set for yourself. So yes, but before we get into the video, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. All right. So back to the payday routine. So for me personally, I get paid um, on the 7th and the 22nd of every month. I literally hate that pay schedule. When I started my job um, earlier last year, I was just like, who gets paid on the 7th? Nothing's due on the 7th and 22nd. So I had to like switch around some of my, like my car payment and my student loan payment. I kind of switched those things around that I could just to kind of match up with my payday. So that's a tip right there. I wasn't even gonna say that, but that's a tip right there. Make sure the things that you pay um, align with your payday because you can kind of switch those things. There's probably some things you can switch like rent, but yeah, like car notes, student loans, those types of things, you can kind of pick and choose what days you want to pay according to the days you get paid. So yeah, that wasn't even kind of in my head, but now that I'm saying it, like, yeah, definitely do that. But yes, so I get paid on those days and I, I have a like strict routine that I stick to in order to make sure that I one, try and stick to my budget and two, achieve my financial goals. So let's go through them. All right, so the first thing that you want to do when you get paid is check your pay stubs for accuracy. And this is especially important for people who work like hourly or who get paid hourly or who work overtime or something like that where your paycheck kind of varies every paycheck. You should definitely be checking your paycheck for accuracy. Even for my salaried folks, you should still be checking for accuracy though. You need to check, you know, make sure those deductions for your 401k or health benefits and all that are, are kind of in line. Because hey, like when it comes to the coins, you need to check, double check, make sure you get in what you're owed, make sure everything is right. Um, make sure that money is not funny. Um, so yes, you should be checking that for accuracy. Once you review your pay stub and you confirm that all the coins is where they're supposed to be in your bank account, you know, in your health savings account and all those accounts, then you have to pay yourself first not pay your light bill, not pay your rent, not pay your mortgage, not do anything before you pay yourself first. This is so important, guys. It's it's so important. I cannot stress the importance of paying yourself first. And when I say pay yourself first, me, when I say pay yourself first, I'll give you an example of how I pay myself first. So every time I get paid, no matter what, I transfer a specified amount of savings into an online savings account and then I automatically send um, my money to invest more into my Robinhood account. Now I obviously have like other investments that are automated like my 401k that comes out before even I get paid but like my main two things that I do to pay myself is to put money aside for my investing and to put money aside for my savings and my savings it goes to investments and other things of some sort but it's like a general online savings account so i highly 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 suggest if you do not have an online savings account separate from your normal bank that you go to that's attached to your checking account to get one and i say that for several reasons so i personally use ally bank i think that's how you say it. it's a-l-l-y i've been using it since 2016 i love it i've I've gotten so much money in interest um, because they usually have very competitive interest rates. At one point, they were as high as like 2.2. Um, the Fed rates have been cut, so I think it's like at 1.8 now. But still, that's way more money than you would get in your Wells Fargo, your Chase, or even your credit union. Um, so you guys definitely look into an online savings account. Um, aside from the great interest rates that you get with those, your money is not as easily accessible, right? But it is accessible. It's just not as easy. So I know we've all been guilty of this, but this was me, especially back in, back in my day, back in college. But basically, like, I'd have money in my savings. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm savings. And that checking get low, I start transferring. Like, I just start transferring money from my savings to my checking because I know it's there. And it's so easy for me to transfer it. If you have an online savings bank account, it's not it's, it's not that easy. And for me, it's a deterrent because I'm just like, by the time I get the money to my regular checking account to go on my debit card, days have passed. Like, it's just like a, a barrier that keeps you disciplined. And like, 
if you have an actual emergency, you you can't get to your money. There's plenty of uh, ATMs and they cover ATM fees and things like that. So I wouldn't worry about that. But it's just a way for me to keep my money separate from my everyday money. And I really do like it. Um, so yes, I suggest, I highly suggest you get an online savings account if you don't. But yes, back to paying yourself first. So what I do is I immediately put that money there. Before I pay anybody else, I pay myself because my savings, my financial goals, and, and all of that is so important to me. It's just, it should be just important to you as it is to paying Sally Mae and Chase, if you, you know, my car loan is with Chase and Chase and, you know, your landlord or whoever you owe. Paying yourself should be just as important. So I prioritize that by paying myself first. So once you pay yourself first, you can go ahead and pay everybody else that you owe. So basically what I do is I pay all the bills that are due within um, that pay period. Um, so for example, <clears throat> my insurance is due like the 26th. I get paid on the 22nd. So with my 22nd check, I go ahead and pay my insurance. And I don't wait till the 22nd to pay it. I go ahead and pay when I get paid. Um, it's like a mind thing, right? You feel attached to that money. You're like, I know I got to pay it, but it's not due till the 26th and it's the 22nd and I'm not paying it. What if something comes up? You have to pay it. You might as well go ahead and pay it. Don't let the mind tricks get to you. Paying a few days early is a good practice. So I go ahead and literally pay every bill that's due within that time frame. That way I get it out of the way. I feel like a lot of us like to look at our bank accounts with all the money and pay as is, but all it does is set you up for failure for something to come up and then you skip out on paying a bill that you know you have to pay and then you end up in trouble. So I go ahead and get all of that paid, all of my bills that are due within that two week period paid. And that way I'm good to go. That I know that no matter what, I paid myself and my bills are paid. Nobody's evicting me, nobody's repoing my car nothing like that and I still got my money saving towards whether it be your emergency fund or your investment fund or your vacation fund whatever you're saving your money towards it's already saved all right next after I do that I make my way to the gas station and fill my car up so obviously most of us are probably gonna have to fill our car up more than once within a two-week span within the you know the next time we get paid but it's just a good practice like go ahead and take care of the necessities first and so I go fill that car up I go right right on to Sam's uh, because they got the cheapest premium gas and um, fill my car up next I get to that meal planning um, and I go to the grocery store um, that weekend that, that weekend that I get paid I go to the grocery store and meal plan and go grocery shopping so that I have my food in the house for that week and I'm not prioritizing um, eating out or any kind of entertainment or non-necessities over having food in the house. So I really just think that's a really good practice to do. And if you're looking at me like, what is meal planning? I've done a video on that. And so right over here, I'll put the link and you can watch my video on meal planning and how it helps me save money and how it can help you too. All right. So at this point, I paid myself. I paid my bills. I went to the gas station and I've gone to the grocery store. So next what I do is reconcile my budget, right? And all of you have hopefully watched my budgeting video or already have a budget that you stick to. But if you don't, you should get one. I'll link my how to budget video here. So that's two videos you need to go watch if you haven't already, the meal planning video and the budgeting video. But yeah, so now it's time for you to reconcile your budget. So all those things that you paid, including yourself, should be on your budget. So it's not like you're going rogue on your budget. That should all be in your budget. So you should go through and check off what you've spent in your budget. And so at that point, ideally, you know, you've paid off all the what I call necessities and need or needs and non-wants. And so you need to go through your budget and account for that and say, I pay this. And that would allow you to see what you have left in your budget to spend um, because if you watch my budgeting video you know that I budget for wants too so if I have a trip coming up that's in my budget for the month if I know I need to get my hair done that's in my budget for the month so you it you should be going back and reconciling and, and matching up what you spent versus what you have left now I know some of you probably are still working on getting your budget right so um, there's a chance that you might have money left over um, from your budget you kind of don't have accounted for now the ideal thing to do would be go and add more money to either extra debt or paying yourself whether that be saving or investing or anything but but 
That's the ideal thing. But if you were to just go rogue and go out to eat, get you a nice outfit, you know, take an uh, impromptu road trip or anything like that that costs you money to where the night before you get paid again, you only have 99 cents to your name. Guess what? You gonna sleep good at night because guess what you already paid yourself and you already covered all of your bills that you had to pay so even if you don't you know be miss budget of the year and go pay you know down extra debt or pay you know more money to your savings account you've already taken care of what you need to take care of and that is yourself and that is your bills and so you will feel fine about that so that's kind of why i feel like this payday routine is so good because it's foolproof no matter what no matter if i go f off my money a week before i get paid again i've already you know covered the necessities i've already paid the bills i owe i've already paid myself i've already saved this month so yes i am gonna go to fashion nova and go crazy and you will still feel okay about yourself like i said ideally is not to do that but if you do you're still covered and so that's really why I feel like this payday routine just works for me and it'll probably work for you. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So yeah, that's what I do. So let's just run through it really quickly. So one, review your pay stub to make sure you got paid. Make sure the coins are in order. Um, two, pay yourself. Three, pay everybody else that you owe. Um, four, go and get some gas. Five, get them groceries. And six, reconcile your budget. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it, you guys. And you know... If you have any questions about my pay, payday routine or maybe some of the things I mentioned, I know I mentioned Ally Bank, which I'm a huge champion of. If you have any questions about any of that, feel free to ask me. So I did want to leave you with a few extra like financial payday tips. Just things that I thought about while thinking about this video. And my number one tip, um, I've never done this, but I know people have done this and it's gotten in, them in a lot of trouble. Do not, I repeat, do not do payday loans. They are basically the equivalent of a scam. I can't even believe that they're legal because it's just such predatory lending. Um, I feel like the, the United States should be protecting consumers from this, but they don't. Do not do payday loans. You'll essentially get a little bit of money, and it, but it'll, you'll end up owing so much more that it's not worth it. Next do not impulse buy just because you see that money drop in your account does not mean you should go buy the new airpods or the new ipad or whatever it is do not impulse buy you should always plan for big purchases so do not do that um this is another big one if you do happen to get a raise or bonus as i know we just started 2020 so a lot of people get raises and bonuses either at the beginning of the year or the end of the year do not increase your expenses stick to the same budgets that you had before unless you're just budgeting to save more money or maybe you know invest in a business or a side hustle but do not increase your expenses don't say oh i got this big bonus so i'm gonna go you know get this nice beamer no stick with the trusty honda that has kept you and will continue to keep you do not go stunt don't go waste your money on designer don't go you know getting more liabilities just because you're making a little bit of money that's the quickest way to continue to live paycheck to paycheck so um, you get a bonus, you get a raise, put that money towards something that will make you more money or that will cover you in the event of, you know, you losing your job or, or money being funny or something like that. Do not increase your expenses. I cannot stress that enough. So yeah, guys, those are kind of just some extra tips that I thought of when I was preparing for this video and I just wanted to throw those out there. But that's pretty much it. I really believe that if you kind of stick to this payday routine, you will for sure see an improvement in your finances and your budget, and you will definitely find that you are saving more money. You'll have more money to do the things that you want to do and improve your finances. So yeah, guys, that's all for today. If you have any questions about anything that I mentioned, just uh, comment down below and I'll be happy to answer them. Remember, I do have budgeting templates that I created that I'm happy to share with you. I also have meal planning templates that I'm happy to share with you as well. Just comment down below. As my channel grows, I plan to get a, some sort of third party website that I can just link those templates to, but I don't have anything like that yet. So for now, just comment below. I'm happy to email you any templates that I create. Um, I created them for myself, but also to share with you all. So happy to do that. All right, guys. Well, I hope this video was super helpful. Next payday, I want to see you implementing these tips that I just told you about. Don't forget the most important one. Pay yourself. 
All right, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.